Today is Palm Sunday, and uh, we welcome you to this first uh, broadcast for teens and uh, possibly some youths uh, watching. And uh, though sometimes, you know, in other days we have been, you know, Palm Church, So today, tutayonea tuko mtandao. But if you have a couple of compound, then you should find it. You know, some of those are, kuna kitu walimu wana itaka tactile learners. You have to touch, you know, cheke cheke na ye hivi. So you go ahead and, you know, it's very important. These things, uh, they help us remember some of our, you know, our foundational, uh, our foundational word, our foundations, our, our foundational foundations of Christianity. So if you are a Christian, you go ahead. There's nothing wrong with that. And the base of uh, Palm Sunday is found in Matthew. You can read that in Matthew. You can read the entire story for yourself in your own time in Matthew chapter 21. And this is where we are seeing Jesus coming into Jerusalem. And, you know, a few days after that, he will be crucified. And uh, that's basically what we are remembering today. So as you continue even to listen to the rest of the uh, the, 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 the teachings that we are going to be doing and doing today, may you be encouraged that Jesus, this is the day we are celebrating triumphant entry. And also significantly, you can also look at it as Jesus is entering or is asking for, you know, a way into your heart. Jerusalem, yeah? Very important. So God bless you and let's continue even in this day. In case you have fallen by the wayside of life, your dreams and vision shattered and you're broken inside. You don't have to stay in that shape that you're in. The portal wants to put you back together again. So good morning and praise the Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Teacher Jose, one of the team's instructors at ACK Cathedral of the Good Shepherd Nakuru. I come to you today to encourage you from the word of God as we look at the Bible and what it says about the times that we are living in. This is a very challenging uh, time to every one of us, the governments, to the parents, to the youths and teenagers like you. It is also challenging to the little children that are at home and not in school instead. I would like us to begin a series today that I have divided into four parts. And uh, the aim of this series is to equip you as a Christian teenager or a young person to begin a journey in your minds and our hearts. This journey will help you think through what we are going through in light of God's word and give you ideas on how you shall maintain your faith in Christ even in a time when we are not able to gather in church as usual. So part one, we begin I have titled this, Making the Right Choices During a Crisis. And we shall be looking from, uh, uh, it is inspired from Psalm chapter 46. Verse 1 of chapter 46 says, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. From that verse we see, God is a safe place to hide. And is in this a perfect time to hide and stay home. Closing dates of the schools and the learning institutions according to what uh, the government had communicated earlier in the year was to be 10th April 2020, which we are yet to get to. And yet we are at home and not in school. We are at home not for holiday, but to be protected. God from that verse we are saying, God is ready to help us when we are in need. In the entire world right now, we are in great trouble. We all know and are aware of COVID-19, 
coronavirus, in other words. And it is like we are standing at a cliff edge of doom. However, this is not a time to cower and trend in fear. And why do I say this? Because God who commands armies of angels is protecting us from wherever we are. And there's a story here that is very interesting. I would want us to read from the word of God. Uh, in uh, second, the, the, the story is taken from Second Kings chapter 6. And I'll begin from verse 8. Now, the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such a time and up such a place. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, Beware that place, of that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on his guard in such places. This enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, Will you not tell me which one of us is on the side of the king of Israel? So he thought that he had an insider who was informing the, 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 the king of Israel. None of us was off, my lord king, said one of his officers. But Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Verse 13 continues, go find out where he is, the king ordered, so I can send men and capture him. The report came back, he is in Dothan. Then he sent horses and chariots and strong forces there. They went by night and surrounded that city. When the servant of, of, uh, when the, servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, Oh, Lord, open his eyes so he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes, and he looked and saw the hill full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike these people with blindness. So he struck them with blindness. That is where now we are getting that, that part, that God who commands armies of angels is protecting us. As we see the story of Elisha and his servant, when they are, uh, they are in Dothan, and uh, the king of the Arameans has sent his people to come and capture him. There were angels surrounding. When the servant's eyes were opened, he saw that there were angels surrounding Elisha and himself. And that is what we want to get our comfort and consolation from, even at such a time as this. That God who commands armies, big armies of angels, is protecting us, even in this season. Amen? So, number two, God who wrestled with Jacob is fighting for us. That's something that we should build our confidence in at such a time as this. God who wrestled with Jacob is fighting for us. That is a story we find in Genesis chapter 32 from verse 21 to 26. I'm reading from the NIV version. It says, so Jacob's gifts went on ahead of him, but he himself spent the night in the camp. That night, Jacob got up and took his wives, two wives, his two maidservants, his 11 sons, and crossed the ford of Jabok. After he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wretched, and he wrestled with the man. Verse 26, then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. That is where we sing. We have always sung this song in the teens class, that Mungu uende na sisi, Mungu uende na sisi na hatutaweza kutoka hapa kama huendi pamoja nasi. 
If you can remember that song, we can, we can sing a little bit of that part. Tunaomba uwepo wako uende nasi Bwana wa majeshi tusikie Kama huu endi nasi Hatutaki kutoka hapa Hatuwezi peke yetu enda nasi Tutavua mapambo yetu Vitu viyote vya thamani kwetu Mioyo yetu tualeta mbeleza ko Tutakase na utembe na si That's where that song comes from. When Jacob tells that angel, the man who fought, who wrestled with him through the night, and tells him, I will not let you go at daybreak until you bless me. And that is the God who is protecting us. The God who wrestled with Jacob. He's fighting for us right now. Verse 2 of Psalm 46. So we will not fear. We will not fear. When earthquakes come and mountains crumble in the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble as the waters surge. And from that verse, we can see the things that are happening right now in our world today are not new to God. They, are not, they, they were foretold, and God is in total control. Let's look at a few scriptures and see what the Bible says about such times that we are living in. In Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2, reading from the NIV version, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and all nations will stream to wheat. And what the Bible here is telling us, that in the days that we are living in, I know you have heard something about the last days in church, or maybe you have read from the word of God about the last days. And this could be the last days that we are living in. And what we'll, we'll begin to see happening, right now if you check your Facebook or your Instagram or whatever social platform you are in, there are very many men of God preaching. It's like the temple of the Lord is being established. We have many people preaching on social media right now than, many other, than any other thing that could be posted some time back. It is the Lord's temple that is being established. And it is all over, not just on your phone or your internet space, even in the internet space of the older people. In Mika, these are minor prophet, as we read in the CRE in school, from the Amplified Version, Mika chapter 4, verse 1. But the later days, it shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established at the highest mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and peoples shall flow to it. That is exactly what is happening right now. Everyone is going to find hope in church. Regardless of churches being closed right now, that we cannot gather in big numbers. Everyone is looking up to God. Everyone is looking up to what will the man of God say about what we are going through right now. And these are days that were foretold long time ago by men of God. In Acts chapter 2 verse 17, the amplified version, and it shall come to pass in the last days, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all mankind. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, telling for the divine counsels, and your young men shall see visions, divinely granted appearances, and your old men shall dream divinely suggested dreams. What we are seeing here is that this is the time to receive the Spirit of God. As a young person, as a teenager, as a youth of this church, this is your time to receive the Spirit of God. And think creatively about your future. 
because you are spending a lot of time alone. Something else I could add on that is study alone and unsupervised. Right now, for those who are in school, there are no teachers to supervise us. There are no lecturers to check out whether we are studying or not. This is your time to study alone and unsupervised. Receive divine counsel from God in the privacy of your homes and in your bedrooms. And that's what, that's what is our prayer right now in the name of Jesus. Write down your visions and pray over them that God will make them come true. This is the time to reflect. Listen to the dreams of your parents and elders, some of whom are in quarantine with you right now. Listen to their stories. They will inspire you. And even though sometimes they might not inspire you right now, sometime later in life, it will be stored somewhere in your minds, and you are able to, you are able to receive that in your life. And as we are seeing from that verse, we are seeing that these sons, these are, when the Bible talks about your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, it's talking about the teenagers, the youth, that we will have a divine, you know, we'll have divine counsel from the word of God. And as young people, we will see visions. These are divinely granted appearances that are very spiritual. And the only way we can be able to see that is by receiving the Holy Spirit to comfort us, to walk with us, and to stay with us even while we are at quarantine. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 to 4, from the message version. This is what the Bible talks to us about at such a time. It comes in very strongly and tells us, don't be naive. There are difficult times ahead. As the end approaches, people are going to be self-absorbed, money-hungry, self-promoting, stuck-up, profane, contemptuous of parents, crude, coarse, dog-eat-dog, unbending, slanderous, impulsive, wild, savage, cynical, treacherous, ruthless, bloated windbags, addicted to lust, and allergic to God. That's what the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3, 1-4 that in the last days, that's the kind of people we'll be having. And this is a time to gain knowledge and converse with our parents and our guardians back home. Maybe some of us have been to many schools in, on, on counseling and Sunday services, and most of the teenagers and young people always complain of, my parents have no time for me. Now, this is the time. God has ordained this time that you have all the time with your parents. Will you put on your earphones and block the entire family from yourself? This is not the time for that. This is the time to gain knowledge and converse with those parents. Converse with those guardians. It is very important. Don't be self-centered and think that your parents are being tough on you for nothing. Some are saying, there is no big deal. life let me tell you something. There is actually a very big deal if you don't do as required right now. You know, you, you know some virus is a microscopic thing. You are not able to see it with your eyes. So if you're careless, boss. This is no time to, to be disobedient and disrespectful to parents. This is not time for that. No, 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 no. Follow every instruction carefully. Instructions given by the government, instructions given by your parents, instructions given by your teachers, the Ministry of Education. They are keeping, you know, they are talking every day on TV and telling us what to do. Please follow. This is not time to be addicted to lust through watching wrong stuff in the internet. Be accountable for your bundles. Very important. Be accountable for your bundles. This is not the time to watch some, you know, some people watch some wrong movies, others are into porn, others posting some funny images of themselves. Please don't do that. This is not the time to be addicted to those things. And that's what the Bible has told us in 2 Timothy. We should not become allergic to God and addicted to lust. That is the word of God. A few notices. 
stay home. Number one, stay home. As we have always told you in teens class and in the youth service, with the rest of the instructors and teachers and guests that come to our church, ka kwenu mse. And do, do, as what, do what is required, and God will fight for you. You know, God has given us freedom. He does not interfere with us. But if you make the wrong choices in such a time of crisis, you might just pay for it. You must just face the consequences. The second thing also I would want to say as a notice, yes, some of you, we know you miss school. Some of you, you miss your friends. You miss going out with your buddies. You miss going out for ice cream, poetry, eh, music, gigs, movies, eh, and computer game joints in town. When Guinea to miss to swim, eh, and many other things that we, we normally do with our friends. However, due to the nature of this disease, it is communicable. Hence, the government has banned crowding in places. Please understand that it is for a short while. It will not be forever. And life shall go back to normal. Life will, be, will go back to normal. Number three, this is a perfect time to bond with your parents and guardians as we have seen, even in those scriptures we have read above. This time to bond with our parents, our guardians, your siblings, your younger sisters or your older ones, and those that live in your homes. The next one is maintain high levels of cleanliness. And we have heard this over and over and over again. Clean your hands and your bodies. Sasa hapa majama hugomea maji, hamna baati, especially the boy child. God has just answered the prayers of your parents. Oga na usanitize mtunguyas. Very important. Very important. Hapa kuna u, usipo, uneza patikana on the wrong side. Na ujue, hata kukamkwenu, itakuwa tena bala. Because again, we are under quarantine. It is very tricky. Someone said, cleanliness is next to godliness. So, something else, develop a productive and engaging relationship with God. This is the time for that. Hakuna wasi wengi wanatusumbua, hakuna kutembea tembea, hakuna kuzurura. This is the time. Make your Bible your friend. Grow in your ability to worship God through reading and obeying his word. And listen to edifying biblical music. This is not the time to listen to all the songs that are talking about coronavirus. Stop crowding your mind with corona. There is a life after this. As a Christian young person, this is the time to edify ourselves with biblical music. Remember, this will soon come to an end. What kind of a person will you be? We shall know what you interacted with during the quarantine after this time is over. So for more of this series and more messages like this, you can find these lessons and others at ACK, Cathedral Nakuru, YouTube channel, and Facebook page flat platforms. Let us keep in touch for Christian warmth and prayer. It is encouraged in the Bible. And for questions and and clarity, maybe there's something I've said that you cannot get it, you can uh, reach me on Twitter at, uh, at josephnoble28 or DM me on Instagram at jose.scripture.heritage or on Facebook platforms. It is very important. Don't keep quiet alone. We need the warmth of each other. God bless you. See you soon.